In this lecture, we'll go more deeply into that important area of government and government uh, policies and how different policies might affect economic risk in some situations. Uh, we'll talk about this because it's the one area which is quite significant in terms of making the international strategy and uh, the, the policy and strategic decisions about international expansion um, more difficult, but also it makes it clear as to why indeed the international marketplace is so much more complex, because you do have different governments and different regulations, different regulatory regimes and different economic systems. We don't often think that way um, when we think about buying and going to the store and buying things, but indeed there are different economic systems and different philosophies of government, and that affects how, one's, how one develops their business strategy going forward. Um, governments can have policy differences and there can be advantages to what governments do and disadvantages. Uh, they may offer tax incentives. Uh, we hear about certain countries that want to have very low tax rates to attract business headquarters and make profits accrue in that, in that regime. Um, they might have low tax rates for that reason. Um, sometimes there's, um, they offer low-cost loans. Sometimes they help you develop a location. They'll actually build out the roads and bridges and all of that to help businesses find a place where they can, be com they can comfortably uh, form their, uh, perform their operations. They might train their workers very well, offer you know, very good education systems and the like. So certain government policies can be extremely helpful. On the negative side, sometimes you have regulations that require businesses to act or perform in a certain way. They might have, you might have extremely um, uh, strong labor policy where it's difficult to hire and fire people or uh, they might require certain vacation hours and the like which might make it more difficult. Um, they might be providing subsidies to domestic competitors. The companies that wave the same flag as the government might have some advantages whether overt or covert. Uh, there might be import restrictions. In other words, you're only allowed to import certain things or under certain, uh, certain there might be certain price associated with imports, uh, quotas and the like. Um, so there may be reasons why it's harder for you as an outside firm, an international firm, to compete in a marketplace like that. Um, some countries require that, that, that things that are sold have local content, which means some portion is manufactured or added, value added, is provided in that country. Uh, you might have to get approval for selling certain things like foods or drugs or whatever through the governmental agencies. Um, there may be countries that do not allow you to move profits out of their country and you have repatriation, that's what they call it, of, uh, of profits. You're not allowed to take the money out and send it to your home country. You have to spend it or invest it locally. And sometimes country or companies or countries require that when a subsidiary is opened up that there is some local ownership. There's some, sometimes a majority ownership and sometimes a local ownership. So those are the sorts of things that can be very restrictive as you think about all the factors that affect your competitiveness in a particular country. So there's two elements to this. One, if you think about it, is political risk. Those laws can change. Uh, regimes that are in power can change, so something that was originally a very um, friendly environment it could be some of the industries or assets could be nationalized, which means their ownership is taken over by the government and you essentially lose control or ownership, sometimes without compensation, sometimes with limited compensation. Um, you may have regulations change overnight in terms of how difficult it is to operate in a country. Those are political risks when the rules change because of competitive, uh, because of uh, political changes within a particular country. There's also economic risk. There may be countries that are more stable than others. We talked about in an earlier lecture, high inflation rates. You may have government in, um, interventions that try to affect that, causing some instability in the economic system, the mon monetary system. Some of the regulations may change over time. Um, and in some cases, it may, you may not have the kind of property rights that we are used to in, in capitalist countries where you have the right to own property and own assets. In some cases, there are industries that are run and owned by governments, controlled by governments in a, in a socialist kind of system in some industries, and that happens in some types of property as well. So there's political risk, and there's also economic risk, which relates to how the economy is run. 
and what laws associated with the economy, as well as who's in control and what sort of political environment you have. These also have effects on exchange rates. Because we don't have one global currency, and if we did, that would create some challenges, uh, as the EU found uh, in certain of their economies were weaker than others during the financial crisis. But different exchange rates create their own types of risks. When one's currency is strong, when the dollar is strong, that, um, and that, what that means is that you get fewer dollars for the number of euros or, uh, or won or whatever other currency one has. Um, there's, when you have a strong currency, then it, people, it's harder to export your products um, whenever you sell them, but you all, it also can be an advantage because it creates more demand for goods for, for imported products because they're cheaper. Um, so you have this problem of, uh, uh, of whenever your currency goes stronger, you, it's much more difficult to sell internationally. The reverse is also true. If your currency goes weaker, that means that your goods are relatively cheaper when they're sold in other countries. And so they can sell, they can buy more product. And countries, when their currency weakens, they tend to sell more products externally in other, in other markets, which actually can tend to, again, cause their currency to rise uh, once again. So they tend to balance out like that. But there is a change. So you can't, you can't uh, depend upon fixed price. You don't necessarily have control over the price, the absolute price that's being sold because currencies are, uh, are floating, if you will. So while you may be selling something and it seems relatively cheap, but if your currency gets, goes up, you still sell at the lower price in the home currency, like in euros, but you're getting less dollars back in the end. And so that could, be, uh, uh, that could make it seem like your profits are lower, even though in the home market, where, I mean, the forward market where you're selling, people sell buy at the same price. You're making lower profits because you're not making, you're not making as many dollars. They're make, they're selling, they're buying at the same number of euros, but you're not making as many dollars. So that creates a a whole series of com of financial complexities, and what they call foreign exchange risk, which is also um, hedging risk. You can try to to compensate for with what are called hedging strategies, and large. Um, foreign currency hedging, and large, uh, large firms that do a lot of business abroad have many, many uh, people working on making sure their foreign currency is hedging. That is, you buy currency in futures markets to make sure that you minimize the fluctuation of volatility and those kinds of risks. So those are the sorts of things that you worry about on this sort of macroeconomic level with political risk, with um, economic risk in country, and then also with uh, this foreign currency risk. This is the sort of large, the large flows and effects across the globe that you have to take into account as you plan strategy. There are other micro effects which we'll start talking about in our next, uh, our next lecture where we'll talk about strategies for entering these markets. But you always have to keep in mind that at the broad level, these other political, economic, exchange rate factors are always there in the background impacting decision making and what the, the most logical choice is at a given point in time, making sure that you have contingency strategies if these macro factors change. That's why competing internationally is so complex and can be so difficult and risky, I would add. Next time, we'll talk about entering strategic market or strategic options for entering foreign markets.